فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم But there's a third way it is not a shar'i way it is haram but if it does happen we have to all obey the method that was taken is haram but if it does happen we have to listen and we have to obey and that is what is known as al ghalaba ghalaba means what somebody takes over us forcefully this is haram are you there one leader throws another leader over one day he does a coup nah are you there what does he do he does a coup and he gets in charge next day on the radio everybody's been told stay at home <coughs> are you with me brothers no one's allowed to leave and then suddenly what happens the president he starts speaking on the uh, radio everyone's listening your your new leader is fulan ibn fulan so the previous one is gone he's in prison or he's killed what do the people do here the people here he is a leader for them wajibat lahu ta'a he has to be obeyed as long as there's no disobedience of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala in it and this is ijma imam ahmed is the one who brought the ijma and imam ahmed rahimahullah he brought an ijma in that particular issue we're now going to go to the final sorry the second second last chapter we're now going to go to the second last chapter which is ash-shubuhat doubts wal raddi alayha refuting it and debunking it many people who argue for elections and democracy systems they bring doubts and they bring that forward and a lot of the people are unaware of these these answers that we're going to give in response to these doubts some of you here may not know the answer to these doubts and i'm going to bring as much as i can be in lillahi alkareem but my beloved brothers and sisters laysa bil manhaj salaf it is not from the methodology of ahlus sunnah wal jamaa that we bring forward doubts to the people wa lidhalik ahlus sunnah wal jamaa in their books they affirm the aqida and they leave it like that they don't bring it to the people's hearts doubts they tell the people to stay away from that doubts but the doubts are already put out these doubts are not what we brought out they are already propagated and they are put out to the people and it's been brought to the people's households whether we agree or disagree so what we're doing is we're trying to respond to them because only the doubts are coming to the people no response is coming and the hope inshallah ta'ala is is to clarify the truth from this the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam he warned us from trying to get close to doubts there's a powerful hadith a very powerful hadith al imam ahmed abu dawood al hakim all narrated the hadith is from the authority of imran ibn husayn imran ibn al husayn aba imran ibn al husayn radiyallahu ta'ala anhu that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said man sami'a bid dajjal anyone who hears of dajjal fal yan'a anhu If you hear of the jal coming out run away get away far from him the prophet swore by Allah he said for wallahi by Allah 
إِلَّا الرَّجُلَ لَا يَأْتِيهِ A man will come to Dajjal. A woman will come to Dajjal. وَهُوَ يَحْسِبُ أَنَّهُ مُؤْمِنٌ And he will believe that Dajjal is a believer. Why? فَيَتَّبِعُهُ مِمَّا يُبْعَثُ بِهِ مِنَ الشُّبُهَاتِ Why? Because of the doubts that he's blowing into the people. The jal, the person will look at him as a believer. The jal. Did you guys know the statement of the messenger where he said, A prophet hasn't come before me. Illa an dara ummatahu. Except he warned his people from the jal. And the prophet said, I am the final prophet. I am the final prophet. So he's going to come out from my ummah. Every nation thought, every prophet thought maybe it's my nation. But then when the next prophet came, the other prophet thought, okay, it's my one now. Final prophet is who? Nabi Allah Muhammad. So he's definitely going to come out what? In this ummah. And the signs of his coming is as the Prophet told us is that he won't be mentioned on the pulpits. He won't be spoken about. And the people won't be told about the Jal. That's the sign of his coming. Shaykh ibn Uthaymeen, Muhammad ibn Salih al Uthaymeen, he took a fa'idah out of this hadith. Why would the people think that the Jal is a believer? What was the illa and the reasoning why the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned? The illa is of two types. The reasoning in the Sharia is two types. A reasoning that is mentioned. I can now ask you today, and I say to you, I can ask you guys and say to you all, is khamr haram? My question to you is why? Because of iskar, right? Intoxication. Why? How do you know it's intoxic intoxication? The reason why alcohol is haram. Because the messenger specifically mentioned that reason. That is called illa mansusa. Illa mansusa. Ma ma'na mansusa? Is textualized. Is mentioned by him, alayhi salatu wasalam. The second type of illa is called illa mustambata. It's not there. But scholars would try to work hard and they would do istimbat out of the reasoning why this was made haram. Are you with me, brothers? This hadith that we have with us, the jal. The reason why the people would think he's a believer is the reasoning mentioned here. Is it mustambata or is it mansusa? It is mansusa. The Prophet mentioned it here. What is it? He's going to blow in the people shubuhat. Sah? Anyone who they ever saw blowing in the people's minds doubts, they used to say he's a Dajjal. He's a Dajjal. What did the messenger tell us to do with Dajjal? He said, Run away from him. Do you come close to him? Do you deal with him face to face? You expose yourself to him. If you do, what's he going to do to you? Ibn Uthaymeen took something from this hadith. He said, this is also like the misguided scholars. The misguided scholars who call the people based on desires. The misguided scholars who say to the people, democracy is Islam. Democracy is Islamic Shura. 
and then they come and they blow in the general mass their shubuhat. We were commanded people like that falian anhu turn away from them, get away from them, don't listen to them, don't give them your ear, don't think to yourself, I am strong. And this mindset is the same mindset that's going to take thousands of people to Dajjal. They won't listen. When they hear of him, they're like, oh, I want to know how he looks. I just want to see how, what, how he does things. People won't follow instructions. And that's the same reason when you tell the people, at don't listen to Fulan and Alan. Don't take knowledge from him. He's going to cause you harm. How many brothers did we see? I saw personally that they were righteous people. They had good in them. But what did they do? They placed their ears to these people. They placed their ears to these people. And then they got caught by Mahabu Shahawat and Shubuhat were thrown at them. And as Hudayfa radiallahu anhu he said, that the doubts and the shubuhat when they are thrown at the heart, what are they? It's like an arrow, it goes and hits the heart. فَإِنْ أُشْرِبَهَا If the heart drinks it and it soaks it like a cotton, the next one comes, it swallows it. The next one, it comes, it swallows it. What's going to happen? After a time, Hudayfa radiallahu anhu said, لا يعرف معروفا ولا ينكر منكرا. He wouldn't know the right from the wrong. The wrong becomes right and the right becomes wrong. The way for salvation and prosperity and safety is the way you will protect your health and the way you will protect your well being, protect your religion. This is your Rasul Mal. This is your capital. If you lose your health, you're not the first to lose it. And if you die, it doesn't affect your hereafter. But if you lose your religion, and you lose your Islamic identity, that person, he's what? He's lost. In this world and the hereafter. ولذلك the messenger used to say اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلبي على دينك Oh Allah, the one that tosses and turns the heart make my heart firm upon your religion I'm going to now ask you all a sincere, honest question A doctor came up to you today and he said to you the following he says to you a particular matter that you wanted to take, something you wanted to take. So the doctor said to you, this is poisonous and it will kill you. And then you went to a second doctor. And the second doctor said to you, it's not poisonous, but it's very harmful. Then you went to a third doctor. He said, there's benefit in it with harm. What would your logic mind tell you? You have three doctors, there can't be a fourth one, because this, this is all it can have. Would you go forward with it? Democracy is like this, an election. How? The ulama of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, Sheikh Abdul Aziz ibn Baz, Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen, Sheikh Al-Albani, Sheikh Luhaydan, Sheikh Abdul Muhsin Al Abbad, Al Lam Al Sheikh Wasiullah Al Abbas, and Hadith Wala Haraj, and all the other scholars who said it, all of them, Ittafaku, Kalimatan Wahida, one word, all of them agreed that this has come to us from the enemies of Islam. Pay attention. Election, democracy, it has come to the Muslims, Ja'at min qibal al a'da, it has come to us from the angle of the enemies of Islam. It is not in the Kitab, nor is it in the Sunnah, 
nor did the Salaf of Salah implement this, or nor did they, they will agree. That's the Itifaq agreement. There is no khilaf on this. But they differed on something. They differed on the following. The first ones, they said, that, so all three of scholars, the first group said, there is no khayr in it whatsoever. وَأَنَا أَمِيرُ إِلَى هَذَا الْقَوْلِ Sheikh Muqbil's قول Muhammad Khalil Harras Ibn Badis Abdul Rahman Ibn Wakil They said لا خير فيه بل فيها شر There's evil in it Leave it in totality Second ones they came They said فيه خير وشر There's خير and there's شر But the شر is more than the خير so leave it Are you with me? Second, the second group, what did they say? في خير وشر. There's good and bad in it. ولكن But شرها It's evil is more than It's خير. Leave it. The third Which is فيها خير وشر. There's خير and شر in it. ولكن خيرها أكبر من شرها. Go back to the poison I asked you now. The first doctor said to you what? It's poisonous. We said it's evil. It's poisonous. Democracy and ele election is poisonous. It's poisonous for your religion. The second group, what did they say? There's good and there's but the harm is with more in the, on the side of the evil and the harm. The same which is what the doctor said to you. He said there is harm. It's not poisonous. But there's harm. And there's good. But the harm outweighs the good. The third one was what? There was good. And there's harm. What would you do in this situation? Just like you left the poison, would you leave this? Huh? Answer it. Why would you leave this one when it's got something to do with your health and it's only something you're going to affect from? It's an, something that will affect you as an individual alone. Then something that will affect the Ummah Ayamatan. And that will affect people's religion. The only answer I can give is that in al hawa yu'mi desires blind in a person. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, In la ta'mal abasar walakin ta'mal qulub lati fi sudur. It's not the eyes that become blind. In la ta'mal abasar walakin ta'mal qulub lati fi sudur. It is the heart that becomes blind. Allah also says, إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَذِكْرَى لِمَنْ كَانَ لَهُ قَلْبٌ أَوْ أَلْقَ السَّمْعَ وَهُوَ الشَّهِيدٌ This is a reminder, but it will only affect who? The person whose heart is alive, who can see from his heart. The only advice I can give those people is, Allah says in the Quran, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنْهُمْ أَئِمَّةً يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا لَمَّا صَبَرُوا وَكَانُوا بِآيَاتِنَا يُوقِنُونَ What are you trying to gain for the Muslims? What are you trying to bring them? Leadership, right? This ayah tells you how to do it. What did Allah say? We made them what? A'imma. We made them leaders. When did Allah make them leaders? Lama sabaru. When they came with patience. Wa kanu bi ayatina yuqinun. And they had certainty, right? Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, Bi sabri with patience. Tutraku shahawat. You leave off desires. Wa bil yaqini and certainty. Tutraku shubuhat. With certainty, you deflect and you get rid of doubts. So all of these doubts that you're bringing has come to you because you lack certainty. And since you lack certainty, it has made us lose the opportunity of becoming leaders. Allahumma thabbitna ala al-haq. Oh Allah, make us firm upon the truth. And also see the truth as the truth. And the falsehood as the falsehood. 
Here I'm going to now go into the doubts that are brought. Doubt number one. They say these democracy systems that you're seeing, it's actually in accordance to Islam. It is Islam what you're looking at. This is exactly what Islam is. And then they recite the ayat for you. قوله تعالى وشاورهم في الأمر وأمرهم شورا بينهم And they read those, read those ayat for you. That we responded in detail at the beginning. The answers that we gave that shura is fi wadim. That shura is on one valley and one path. And democracy and election is on what? It's on another path. But there's one thing I need to repeat, which I did say before. Election is not from Islam. Nor is democracy from Islam. Because we mentioned that election, you're choosing a representative to legislate on your behalf. And Allah wa Taala told us that this is us taking them as lords. اتخذوا أحبارهم وَرُهْبَانَهُمْ أَرْبَابًا مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ They took their rabbis and their monks, lords, besides Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. So we say that us letting these people legislate on our behalf is us taking them as what? We're allowing them and we're justifying, we're endorsing them to legislate on our behalf. And that is far greater. When this ayah came down, the noble companion Adi ibn Hatim, he came to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Ya Rasulullah, we didn't take them as lords. How do we take them as lords? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa because Adi ibn Hatim was a religious person, he knew his previous religion. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what did he say to him? Did they not make halal for you that which Allah made haram? And did they not make haram for you that which Allah made halal? Adi ibn Hatim, he said, yes. What did the Prophet say? Fatilka ibadatuhum. This is ibadah to them. You worship them. Fatilka ibadatuhum. It's very dangerous. The second doubt that they bring, and I want you guys to pay attention to this one. I'm going to go into this one very deeply. It is election is something that was done by the early generation. Abu Bakr was elected. Umar was elected. Uthman was elected. Well, these people, whatever arguments that they're bringing forward, it is not new. It's not something new. These people in this country that you're looking at today, whether it be the ones who speak Arabic, or whether it be those who it's been translated for them, they are taking it from things that are being regurgitated and that are being said and that have also been responded to in the Muslim world. Rather, some of them, when I call and I say this, be milli for me, I say this with belief. They take it from the books that refute. Did I? now bring a doubt am I responding to it are you there somebody would go make a video why elections allowed he will only take the doubts and he will leave off the parts where I responded to it some of them take it from books that was responded to well that if this shows you something what does it show you 
it shows you fi qulubihim maradu fa zadahum allahu marada the sickness in the heart a lot of these people they did that to kalam of ibn taymiyah alayhi rahmatullah i remember a time on one of my videos there was an individual i i mentioned that al imam safari safarini rahimahullah he said that firqa al najiya wa'ifa al mansura are two groups ahl al hadith and yashara And I said he mentioned this in his kitab, Lawami' al-Anwar. One individual, he watched my video because he commented on it. He took that and he took it to another place. And he was using it and telling people, look. Huh? And didn't want to take the response I gave straight away. What did I say? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Kulluha fi nari illa. I said, wahid la yata'addad. If al-Imam al-Safarini is saying it's two, And the messenger said, only one group. How can you bring two and one? How do you bring them together? The answer won't be taken. The shubha will be taken. The shubha will be taken. There's a little kutayyib. Kutayyib, kutayyib is a what? Tasghir. A small book. Very small. It's called Shar'iyatul Intikhabat. It's called Shar'iyatul Intikhabat. Which is the legislations and the proofs for the legislation of election. That is an Islamic legislation. So they bring all the shubhat. So the response are going to come from that book and the things that were put there. So what a person has to understand is that وَإِنَّ الشَّيَاطِينَ لَا يُحُولَ إِلَىٰ أَوْلِيَائِهِمْ لِيُجَادِلُوكُمْ Then the shaytan says revelation to his allies, right? And these people, they pass on this to each other. They pass this on to each other. But a talib, a student of knowledge who's reading his works, who's doing his homework, would see an issue far beyond its occurrence. Li'anna why? He's plugged into the both worlds. The Arab world and the Western world. وَهَذِهِ مِنَ النِّعَمْ This is from the blessings of knowing the Arabic language. Because all of these things are clothed to the people of the West. And for them it seems like this is the true, mashallah, new arguments. And you never ever find them stick to one verdict as years, every year they added something to make it even worse. Last year they will say it was sunnah. Next year they will say it's wajib, fardu kifaya. The year to come they say it's fardu ayin. And they exit, they'll say, it's, if you don't do it, you're a mushrik. لا تستغرب. لا تستغرب. If that next year comes, if they don't say to you, if you don't elect, you're a kafir. لا تستغرب. Don't find it strange. The reason is because Allah says to us, يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تتبعوا خطوات الشيطان. Shaytan starts with one step and he moves you and advances you to levels high up. Allah make us bitna on the truth. Allah make us firm upon the truth. So how do we respond to this argument, which is Abu Bakr, Omar and Uthman were elected? How do we respond to that? That which you have said, we'll say to them, it's not correct. It's not true. Because it has become clear to everybody that election it has so much harm, and we've mentioned all of those harms. And remember, as I said, I left off more than that which I mentioned. What I mentioned and what I left off, what I left off was more. So are you telling to us, the people who we were told to follow, who we were commanded to follow, as Allah said to us in the Quran, فَبِهُدَاهُ مُقْتَدِي Follow their guidance, the noble companions. عَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّتِي The Prophet said, وَسُنَّةِ الْخُلَفَاءِ الرَّشِدِينَ الْمَهْدِيِينَ Oh, وَمَنْ يُشَاقِقِ الرَّسُولَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى وَيَتَّبِعْ غَيْرَ السَّبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أو قوله تعالى وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُمْ And the statement of the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم ستفترق أمتي على ثلاث وسبعين فرقة كلها في النار إلا واحدة قالوا من هي يا رسول الله 
قال من كان على مثل ما أنا عليه اليوم وأصحابي Those people we were told to follow are you saying to me that they fell into shirk? Because one of the mafasid that we mentioned are you telling me that they fell into those mafasid? Fahasha I will say wallahi well, no they never fell into those mafasid not even one of them did they fall into but what they did was they did what is known as shura they came together and they consulted themselves who is the one who is befitting to be the Muslim leader and after discussion amongst themselves and consultation amongst themselves they all agreed upon Abu Bakr's Khilafah and no woman participated in that nor any immature youngster participated in it no disbeliever participated in it they were the people of knowledge and piety and God fearing the ones who he consulted what you're saying is that Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman were chosen by women and they were chosen by immature youngsters and they were chosen by insane people are you there? a drug dealer because today a drug dealer can be you can choose are you saying that to us? Allah will say to you Sarat musharriqatan wa sirta mugharribi Sarat musharriqatan wa sirta mugharribi Fashattana bayna musharriqin wa mugharribi The matter is at the west and you're at the east and there's a big distance between those two parts There are two things you can't bring together Rather Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu He elected, as we said, he appointed who? After his death, who did he do? Abu Umar radiallahu anhu. As for Umar, what did he do? He made Ahl shura a, a group of people. Who are the people who he chose? He chose the remaining what? He chose what? The remaining six of the Ashur al Bashir al Jannah. He chose six. Who were they? Uthman, Ali, Zubair, Ibn Awam, Talha ibn Ubaidillah, Sa'ad, Abdurrahman ibn Awf. Sah. Those six were alive. How many died already? Four already died. Who were the four that died? Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr died. Who died? Umar himself is going to die. Abu Ubaid, Abu Ubaid, Abu Ubaid, Abu Ubaid, Come on, who were the ten promised Jannah? La. Talha was still alive. Hey, this is something you guys have to bring to me. The remaining, I'm going to ask you guys later, inshallah ta'ala. 